that turn brothers and sisters into enemies. We share with you the desire and commitment for communion in the Church. From you, Holy Father, we learn to resist the temptation of any narrowness of mind and heart which shrinks to the size of self instead of expanding to the measure of the fullness of Christ. La Chiesa, per la sua natura, è sempre in uscita e ha bisogno non solo di affermare the Church, by its very nature, is always outward going and is called not only to profess the truth of what it believes, but also to possess the greatness and tenderness of a mother's heart. Today, despite our frailty, we rejoice and we thank you because responding to your call we desire with you to be ever more at the service of the gospel. Sulle sponde del lago di Galilea, Pietro ha professato il suo amore profondo e contrito per il Signore. On the shores of the Sea of Galilee, Peter professed his deep and contrite love for the Lord. It was an important and intimate moment. Jesus, however, told Peter that from that moment on, the cross would never be far from the one he had chosen as the rock on which to build his church. This, the Gospel tells us, was to indicate in what way Peter would glorify God. Our mission today is to help you carry this cross and not to increase its weight with great joy. We wish to walk at your side, knowing that to you have been entrusted the keys of the kingdom. It is with gratitude and trepidation, therefore, Holy Father, that we offer you our profound respect and our obedience. And should the Lord wish it, even to the shedding of our blood. The greeting of the first of the new cardinals, His Eminence, Car or Cardinal-elect, Arthur Roach, now greeting the Holy Father. and everyone now on their feet. Oremos. And we pray. Lord God, Father of glory, source of all that is good, who unceasingly enrich your church throughout the world with an abundance of gifts, yet with still greater benevolence watch over the sea of blessed Peter the Apostle, which you have set above all others. In your providence grant that I, your servant, may carry out wisely the office entrusted to me in the certain knowledge that you will bestow upon the universal church all those things you have promised her to whose benefit all is directed. Amen.
And now there will be a gospel reading. Ascoltate la parola del Signore dal Vangelo secondo Luca. Brothers and sisters, listen to the words of the Holy tempo, Gospel ac- or according to vicini, Mark. Sono venuto a gettare fuoco sulla terra e quanto vorrei che fosse già acceso. Ho un battesimo nel quale sarò battezzato e come sono angosciato finché non sia compiuto. Uh, we're pausing here. It seems that the reader has now realized uh, the text he was given is not the one that was prepared. And now we go to the discourse of our Holy Father. The words of Jesus in the very middle of the Gospel of Luke pierce us like an arrow. I have come to bring fire to the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. Journeying with his disciples toward Jerusalem, the Lord announces this in typically prophetic style using two images, fire and baptism. He is to bring fire into the world, the baptism he himself will receive. Let me take just that, the image of fire. The powerful flame of the Spirit of God, God himself, as consuming fire, a passionate love that purifies, regenerates, and transfigures all things. This fire, but also this baptism, is fully revealed in the Paschal mystery of Christ when he, like a column of fire, opens up the path to life through the dark sea of sin and death. There is, however, another fire, the charcoal fire. We find this in John's account of the third third and final appearance of the risen Jesus to the disciples at the Sea of Galilee. This is a small fire that Jesus himself lit close to the shore as the disciples were in their boats and were hauling up their their nets miraculously filled with fish. And Simon Peter arrived first, jumping in the water and swimming, filled with joy. That charcoal fire is quiet and gentle, yet it lasts longer and is used for cooking. And there, on the shore of the sea, he creates a familiar setting where the disciples, amazed and moved, savor their closeness to their Lord. Today, it would be good for us, dear brothers and sisters, to meditate today on the image of this fire in both of these forms and in its light to pray for the cardinals, the new cardinals, especially for those of you who in this celebration will receive the dignity and task it entails or mission it entails. With those words found in the Gospel of Luke, the Lord calls us once more to follow him along the path of his mission, a fiery mission, like that of Elijah, not only for what he came to accomplish, but also for how he accomplished it. And to us, who in the church have been chosen from among the people for a ministry of particular service, It is as if Jesus is handing us a lighted torch and telling us, take this, as the Father has sent me, I now send you. In this way, the Lord wants to bestow on us his own apostolic courage, his zeal for the salvation of every human being without exception. He wants to share with us his magnanimity, his boundless and unconditional love, for his heart is a fire with the mercy of the Father. This is what is a fire in the heart of Jesus. 
Jesus, the mercy of the Father. And within this fire, too, there is the mysterious tension of his mission, the mission of Jesus, poised between fidelity to his people, to the land of promises, to those whom the Father has given us, and at the same time, an openness to all peoples, a universal tension an openness to all peoples, to the horizons of the world, to peripheries that are still unknown. And this is the same powerful fire that impelled the Apostle Paul in his tireless service in the Gospel, in his race, his missionary zeal, constantly inspired by the Spirit and by the Word. It is also the fire of so many men and women missionaries who have come to know the exhausting yet sweet joy of evangelizing and who whose lives themselves become a gospel, for they were before all else witnesses. This, brothers and sisters, is the fire that Jesus came to bring to the earth, a fire that the Holy Spirit infuses in the hearts, hands, and feet of all those who follow him. The Jesus' fire, the, the fire that brings Jesus, or that Jesus brings. Then there is that other fire, that of the charcoal. The Lord also wants to share this fire with us so that, like with Him, so that, like Him, with meekness, fidelity, closeness, and tenderness, and this is God's style meekness, fidelity, closeness, and tenderness, we can lead many people to savor the presence of Jesus alive in our midst, a presence so evident, albeit in mystery, that there is no need even to ask, who are you? For our hearts themselves tell us that it is He, it's the Lord. This fire burns in a particular way in the prayer of adoration when we silently stand before the Eucharist and bask in the humble, discreet, and hidden presence of the Lord, like that charcoal fire. His presence becomes warmth and nourishment for our daily life. That fire ablaze makes us think of the example of St. Charles de Foucault, who lived for years in a non-Christian environment in the solitude of the desert, staking everything on the presence, the presence of the living Jesus in the Word and in the Eucharist and his own presence fraternal, amicable, and charitable. It also makes us think of our brothers and sisters who live, who live their secular consecration in the world, nourishing a quiet and enduring fire in their workplace and in interpersonal relationships, in small acts of fraternity, or those of priests who persevere in selfless and unassuming ministry in the midst of their parishioners. There's a pastor of three parishes here in Italy who has a lot of work. And I asked him, are you capable of doing all of that? Yeah, I can do it. But do you know the name of everyone? He said, yes, even the names of the, their dogs. This is the fire that brings uh, the proclamation of the gospel. Then, too, it's not a similar fire. I'm sorry, then too is it not a similar fire that daily warms the lives of countless Christian married couples kept aflame by simple homemade prayers, gestures, and tender gazes, and by the love that patiently accompanies their children on their journey of growth. And let's not overlook the fire kept burning by the elderly. This is a real treasure, a treasure in the church, the hearth of memory, both in the family and the life of the community. How important uh, this fire of the elderly is. Around it, families unite and learn to interpret the present in the light of past experiences and to make wise decisions. Dear Brother Cardinals, by the light and in the strength of this fire, the holy and faithful people walk from whom we were all taken from that people of God. So we were taken from them and we are being sent to them as ministers of Christ the Lord. What does this twofold fire of Jesus say in a special way to me and to you? 
the, the great fire and the humble fire, the meek fire. I think it reminds us that a son, that a man of apostolic zeal is impelled by the fire of the Spirit to be concerned. Let's not forget we need to have this wasn't translated um, that it's to follow the Lord both in great things and small things a cardinal loves the church always with that same spiritual fire whether dealing with great questions or handling everyday problems with the power with the powerful of this world or those ordinary people who are great in God's eyes I think of the example of Cardinal Agostino Casaroli rightly famous for his openness to promoting through far-sighted dialogue the new prospects that opened up in Europe following the Cold War. May God prevent human short-sightedness from closing anew those prospects that he opened. In God's eyes, however, the visits that he regularly made to the young inmates in a juvenile prison of Rome, where he was known simply as Father Agostino. Now, these were just as important. The great things that he was doing were just as important as his visits to those prisoners. And how many other similar examples could come to mind? I think of Cardinal Van Tuan, called to shepherd the people of God in another crucial scenario of the 20th century, who was led by the fire of his love for Christ to care for the soul of the prison guards who guarded him at the door of his prison cell. These, these people didn't have, they weren't afraid of, of, those, of the great things, but they also took care of the little things. After a meeting that Cardinal Casaroli had, he, he was explaining about it to Pope John the Twenty Third, his his last mission in one of a country, and he was speaking about really high politicians, and the Pope called him and said, "Oh, Eminence, one thing: Are you continuing to go to those young prisoners?" And the Pope said, "Don't ever stop doing it." The, the great um, political meetings, but also the pastoral mission. This is the heart of a cardinal. Dear brothers and sisters, let us once more contemplate Jesus. He alone knows the secret of this lowly grandeur, this unassuming power, this universal vision ever attentive to particulars, the secret of the fire of God, which descends from heaven, brightening the sky from one end to the other, and also slowly cooking the food of poor families, migrants, and homeless persons. Today, too, Jesus wants to bring this fire to the earth. He wants to alight it anew on the shores of our daily lives. Jesus calls us by name, each one of us, each one. He calls all of us by name. We're not a number. He calls us by name. He looks us in the eye, each one of us. Let's let him look at us in the eyes, and he asks, each of you cardinals and all of you brother cardinals can I count on you this is the Lord's question and I'd like I don't want to finish without remembering uh, Richard Cardinal Babor who as soon as he came to Rome felt ill and he's He's been hospitalized with problems of the heart, and it seems he may need to have surgery. Let's remember him as well. So we remember this bishop who should have been here and was not able to, to come.
We're looking at the rings now, the cardinalatial rings, which will be given to the cardinals shortly. A beautiful homily of Pope Francis on this fire brought to the earth a short reading from the Gospel of St. Luke. And that gospel was, I have come to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were blazing already. There is a baptism I must still receive, and how great is my distress till it is over. And we were also just looking at the beretta that will also be bestowed upon the new cardinals shortly. Once the cardinals receive the Beretta, the ring, and the titular church that they will be assigned to here in Rome, it's always been historical that the cardinals participate in the governing of the city of Rome. And now we continue. Dear brothers and sisters, we are about to carry out an agreeable and solemn task of our sacred ministry. It chiefly concerns the Church of Rome, but it also affects the entire ecclesial community. We will call certain of our brethren to enter the College of Cardinals so that they may be united to the Chair of Peter by a closer bond our, of our apostolic ministry. Having been invested with the sacred purple, they are to be fearless witnesses to Christ and his gospel in the city of Rome and in faraway regions. Therefore, by the authority of Almighty God, of Saints Peter and Paul and our own, we create and solemnly proclaim cardinals of home and Rome, Holy Roman Church, and he will say their names as well as the order. Prefectum di Casteri de Culto Divino, Disciplina Sacramentorum. Lazzarum Iu Heum Sic, Arcepiscopo and Episcopo Emeritum Taioensi, Prefectum di Casteri Proclerici. Fernandum Verges Alzaga, Arcepiscopo and Titularem Villa Magnensim in Pro Consolari, President Pontificia Commissiones et Gubernatoratus Santus Status Civitate Vaticani. Ioanne Marco Avelin, Arcepiscopo Massieliens, Petrum Ebede Opaclecche, Episcopum Ecubulovenum, Leonardo Waldricum Steiner, Arcepiscopo Manaensi, Filippo Neri Antonio Sebastiano do Rosario Ferron, Arcepiscopo Guanum e Damasense, Robertus Valterotum McElroy, Episcopum Santi Didaci. Virgilium Carmo da Silva, Arcepiscopo di Liense, Ascarium Cantoni, Episcopo Comense, Antonio Pola, Arcepiscopo Irlavarense, Paolo Cesare Costa, Arcepiscopo Brasilia Politano, Ricciardo Cuglia Baobro, Episcopo Valense, Guilherme Senche Hu, Arcepiscopo Singaporense, Adalberto Martinez Flores, Arcepiscopo Santissime Assunzioni, Giorgio Marengo, Episcopo Titulare Castaveranense, Prefetto Apostolico Ula Mandarense, Giorgio Enrico Jiménez Carvajal, Arcepiscopo Emerito in Cartaginense in Colombia, Enrico Miglio, Arcepiscopo Emerito in Catalinaro, Ioanni Francisco Ghirlanda, Olin Rettore in Pontificio Università di Gregoriane, Fortunatus Frezza, Arcepiscopo Titulare Trebanum. Esquivis Preteri ad ordine Cardinale un diacono per Peritevum, Arturo Roche, Lazzaro Junze Sic, Ferdinando 
After calling them each by name, he is now announcing the those who will be cardinal deacons or priests. Dear brothers, in the presence of the holy people of God, profess now your faith in the triune God and your fidelity to the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. Natus ex Maria Virgine, passus su Pontio Pilato, crucifixus mortuus et sepultus, descendit ad inferos, tertia die resurrexit a mortuis, ascendit ad celos, sedet ad dexterum Dei Patris Omnipotentis, indiventurus est judicare vivos et mortuos. Credo in Spiritum Sanctum, Sanctam Ecclesiam Catholicam, Sanctorum Communionem, Remissionem Peccatorum, Carnis Resurrectionem, Vitam Eternam. Amen. Ego Arturus, Sancte Romane Ecclesiae, Cardinalis And this is their oath of obedience. I promise and swear from this day forth and as long as I live to remain faithful to Christ and his gospel, constantly obedient to the Holy Apostolic Roman Church, to the Supreme Pontiff Francis, become members of the Roman clergy, and cooperate more directly in Francis and his canonically elected successors, always to remain in communion with the Catholic Church in my words and actions, not to make known to anyone matters entrusted to me in confidence, the disclosure of which could bring damage to dis or dishonor to Holy Church. To carry out diligently and faithfully the duties to which I am called in my service to the Church according to the norms laid down by law. So help me, Almighty God. And now the imposition of the Beretta the giving of the cardinal ring and the assignment of the title or the deaconry will now take place as each of the cardinal elect come forward individually to the glory of almighty god and the honor of the apostolic see receive the scarlet beretta as a sign of the dignity of the cardinalate signifying your readiness to act with courage even to the shedding of your blood for the increase of the Christian faith, for the peace and tranquility of the people of God, and for the freedom and growth of Holy Roman Church. Now Cardinal Arthur Roach, Prefect of the Congregation for Divine, or Dicastery for Divine Worship and Discipline of Sacraments, former Bishop of Leeds in England, now receiving the Zucchetto and the Beretta. Now he will receive the ring. Receive the ring from the hands of Peter and know that your love for the church is strengthened by the love of the Prince of the Apostles. And now the title of his church. To the honor of Almighty God and of Saints Peter and Paul, we entrust you with the title of, and he says, thank you for what you said. It's difficult to hear the actual title of the deaconry. And now the other, Cardinals will come forward and the same ritual will take place. This is 
Cardinal Lazzaro Yu, Prefect of the Dicastery for Clergy from Korea. Arcipianorum de Manu Petri, in nome di selezione, principio apostolorum di elezione in tua nella Ecclesia in Globalari, ad onore dei Omnipotentis, ex antorum apostolorum Petri e Paoli, tibi commitimus diaconiam, Iesu boni pastori saldo con Burgo Montagnola, in nome di Patris e Figli e Spirito Santo. The third to come forward, Cardinal Fernando Verges from the Order of the Legionaries of Christ. He is the president of the Pontifical Commission for Vatican City State and president of the Governorate of Vatican City State. Originally from Salamanca, Spain. In nome di selezione, principio apostolorum di elezione in tua e nella Ecclesia in Robolari. Ad onore dei onnipotenti, extantorum apostolorum Petri e Paolo, ti vi commitimus diaconiam, sante Marie de Mercede e santi Adriani al locum vulgo, Villa Albani, in nome di Patris e Figli e Spiriti Santi. Fourth to come up, Cardinal Jean-Marc Aveline, Metropolitan Archbishop of Marseille in France. Arcipiano, Anno de Manu Petri, et nove di selezione, principi apostolorum di lezione in tua angara ecclesia in Roborari. Ad onore in Dei Onipotentis, e Sant'Orona Apostolorum Petri e Paolo e Tivi Comitri Mostivi, Sante Maria al Montes, in nome di Patri, Sess Figli e Spirito Santo. E tanti saluti. Coming forward, Cardinal Peter Okpaleke of Ekwolobia in Nigeria. Arcipiano de Manu Petri, et nove di lezione, principis apostolorum di lezione in tua nera ecclesia in Roborari. Ad onore in Dei Omnipotentis, Santorum Apostolorum Petri e Paolo, Divi Comitimus Titulum Santorum Martin O. The titular church that each of the cardinals is being given also brings with it the title of either a cardinal priest or deacon. Our Holy Father now conversing with this new cardinal from Nigeria. In the early century, the in the early centuries, the cardinals. This word comes from the Latin word cardo, which means hinge, and they made up an administrative body around the pope. And they fell into three categories: priests were responsible for places of worship, deacons for centers of charitable activity, and the bishops were heads of the of the diocese is surrounding Rome. Here we now see Cardinal Leonardo Steiner. He's a Franciscan, the Metropolitan, Ar Metropolitan Archbishop of Manaus in Brazil. So the giving of these cardinals, the 
this titular church connects them once again, makes them citizens in a way of Rome. Because as we heard, they are specifically called forth to help the Holy Father in his own ministry. Now coming forward, Archbishop Philip Neri from Goa in India. Following this consistory, the College of Cardinals will contain 226 cardinals. 132 of these cardinals will be able to elect a future pope. 94 of them are non-electors. Coming forward now, Bishop or Cardinal now, Robert McElroy of San Diego in the United States. The only new Cardinal for North America being created today. Santi Frumenzi a Prata Fiscalia in nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. In this particular consistory, our Holy Father creating 20 new cardinals, 16 of whom are electors and four are non-electors. There are 13 among uh, diocesan clergy, and seven are members of religious institutes. We now see Cardinal Virgilio da Silva, a Salesian from East Timor, the first cardinal to be named for this country. As we see this new cardinal coming from the Salesians, there are three new religious families entering the college, or religious families who have never had a cardinal among them, the Eudists, the Consolata Missions, and the Legionaries of Christ. And the most numerous among religious families in the represented in the College of Cardinals are the Salesians. We now see Cardinal Oscar Cantoni of Como in Italy. Our Holy Father taking time after giving each of them their ring and their title uh, for a moment of private dialogue. And now we see Cardinal Anthony Pula of Hyderabad in India. What is interesting about this new cardinal, he is the first among the Dalit caste in India to be created a cardinal. 
Dei Omnipotenti, se Santorum Apostolorum Petri e Pauli, Tibi Comitimus Titulum, Santorum Protomartirum, in via Aurelia Antiqua, in nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Once again, our Holy Father engaging in dialogue. Now coming forward is Cardinal Paulo Cesar Costa, the Metropolitan of the Archdiocese of Brasilia in Brazil. And with this consistory, our Holy Father Francis has now created 112 of the 226 cardinals that currently make up the College of Cardinals. And although Cardinal Bauerbohr is not here, he would have been presented now. Although he is not present, he is still being elevated to the College of Cardinals since we heard his name mentioned by Pope Francis. Here we see Cardinal William Go of Singapore. Again, the first time ever that a cardinal has been appointed to this island city of Singapore. So individually we see some of the cardinals here, prefects of dicasteries or have other roles in the curia and some are ordinaries of either dioceses or archdioceses in the church at large. So individually, the cardinals are the Pope's primary collaborators, either as heads of the dicasteries or the government of the Vatican City State or as ordinaries of Episcopal sees throughout the world. This is Cardinal Adalberto Martinez Flores, Metropolitan of Asuncion in Paraguay. Cardinal Flores also the first cardinal to be appointed in the country of Paraguay. Now we see Cardinal Giorgio Marengo, a Eudist priest, who is the apostolic prefect in Mongolia, who 
with his appointment is the first cardinal who's ministering in the country of Mongolia. And the, he may be the, the youngest to, uh, being appointed at this time. Here we see Cardinal Jorge Car Jimenez. He is Archbishop Emeritus of Cartagena in Colombia, and he is one of the non-electors being elevated to the rank of Cardinal today. Here is Cardinal Arrigo Milio Emeritus, Archbishop Emeritus of Cagliari in Italy, and also one of the non-electing cardinals. This is the Reverend Father Gianfranco Ghirlanda. He's a former rector of the Pontifical Gregorian University. There were two priests appointed cardinal who are not elected uh, electors, Father Gianfranco Ghirlanda and Monsignor Fortunato Frezza. Monsignor Frezza was ordained a bishop on July 23rd of this year in St. Peter's Basilica as specified by canon law. Any man who is named a cardinal needs to be first ordained a bishop. Archipiano de Manu Petri et noveris direccione principis apostolorum direccione in tua nella ecclesia rogorale. This is Father Gerlanda here before we saw Cardinal Frezza. In 2016, an Albanian priest, Ernest Simoni, because of his advanced age, also asked and obtained to be dispensed from Episcopal consecration. They need to receive a, what's called a deroga, a derogation, or an exemption from what is established regarding the necessity of Episcopal ordination of priests prior to becoming a cardinal. Cardinal Ricardo Cuia Baur, 
Comiti mustitum Sante Maria Immaculate e Lourdensin ad viam voceam. Cardinali Riccardo Cunia Biaugur, Chiabest, e Ique per inviatum speciale imponemus virretum rubrum anunum atque bulam, adeum pertinentium mitemus. Our Holy Father then pronouncing the titular church of the absent Cardinal Richard Kula Babor the Bishop of Wa in Ghana. Dicamos nun omnes oración en Juan Christus, tan con exemplar omnis orationis noviterit. Now the chanting of the Our Father. O God, who always walk in the paths of mercy and truth, renew the gifts that you have bestowed and mercifully grant by your grace what human weakness cannot attain, namely that these servants of yours, by constantly building up your church, may shine forth with integrity of faith and purity of mind. And this brings to a conclusion the ordinary consistory for the creation of cardinals. And we move into the ordinary public consistory for the creation of, I'm sorry, for the vote of some causes of saints. At this time, His Eminence Cardinal Marcello Semerero, prefect of the dicastery for the causes of saints, comes forward. Most Holy Father, upon the conclusion of the canonical process laid down for the causes of saints together with my brother cardinals and bishops here present, I entreat Your Holiness in the name of Holy Mother Church to enroll in due course among the saints Et Artedimen Zatti. Blessed Giovanni Battista Scalabrini and Artemide Zatti. The biographies of these blessed brings the focus of the Church on the theme of migrants, whom, as Your Holiness has said, if they are integrated, can be allowed uh, to breathe the air of, of a universe and reveal the face of our Catholicness, the apostol apostolicity of the Church, they can generate a story of or history of holiness. And now the reading of a brief profile of these two blesseds. Giovanni Battista Scalabrini was born in 1839 in the province of Como, Italy. He was ordained a priest at the age of 23. 
As a parish priest, a pastor, he matured his attention to social problems and became a passionate about the catechetical apostolate. At 36, he was elected Bishop of Piacenza, where he remained until his death on June 1st, 1905. He had a great solicitude for the clergy. He remained in close contact with the people. He was concerned for the teaching of Christian doctrine, and he displayed much charity toward the needy, and these characterized his 30 years of service as bishop in the diocese on the border between Emilia and Lombardy. He knew how to see the reality of so many emigrants from those lands to Brazil, Argentina, and the United States. He saw this not only as an opportunity for charity, but as a real pastoral challenge. He then founded the Congregation of the Missionaries of St. Charles in 1887. And in 1895, that of, that of the Missionary Sisters, with the task of spiritually assisting Italian immigrants. Before his death, he personally visited communities of religious in the United States and South America. His pastoral work was judged by many to be a prophecy of a church close to the people and their concrete problems. He was beatified by St. John Paul II in Rome on November 9, 1997. In Reggio, Italy, Artemi de Zatti was born in 1880. From the age of nine, in order to help his parents, he had to work as a, a day laborer. In his teens, he and his family then emigrated to Argentina and settled in Bahia Blanca. There he met the Salesians of Don Bosco and was particularly attracted by that charism to the point of becoming a lay collaborator, emitting his perpetual profession in 1911. He suffered from tuberculosis. He had promised Our Lady help of Christians that if he were cured, he would dedicate himself completely to the sick. And so, having recovered his health, he began tireless service as a nurse and then also as the head of a missionary hospital. He used to visit the sick in their homes riding on his bicycle with his white coat or a purse and the rosary beads always in one hand. He was an authentic interpreter of the Salesian spirit. He had an affable temperament and, the, and he was always, there was always a gladness about him, even in the most difficult circumstances. Surrounded by much gratitude and a reputation for holiness, he ended his earthly life on March 15, 1951. The Holy Supreme Pontiff, John Paul II celebrated, Saint John Paul II celebrated his beatification on April 14th in 2002. These two blesseds are not only admired by God's people for the splendor of their virtues and their fraternity toward all, but they are also invoked as intercessors of graces and favors. Recently, Your Holiness approved the opinion of the ordinary session of the cardinals and bishops of the Congregation Dicastery for the Causes of Saints regarding the canonization of Blessed Giovanni Battista de Scalabrini and authorized the same dicastery to promulgate the decree relative to the miracle attributed to the intercession of Blessed Artemi de Zatti. Most Holy Father, I earnestly ask you then, for the glory of God and the good of the whole Church, by your apostolic authority, to bestow upon the blessed Giovanni Battista Scalabrini and Artemi de Zatti 
the honor of sainthood. And if it pleases you to determine the dates when they will be solemnly enrolled among the saints. And we await the Holy Father's response. All that is required for Blessed Giovanni Battista Scalabrini and Artemide Zati to be enrolled among the saints has been satisfactorily completed by the diacastry for the causes of saints as we have learned from its prefect, Cardinal Marcello Semeraro. Venerable brothers, before celebrating this consistor, you too individually submitted your judgment in writing and declared that these same blessings should be proposed to the whole Church as examples of Christian life and holiness suited to the circumstances of our time. And now we hear his decision. Venerable brothers, we greatly rejoice that you have considered blessed Giovanni Battista Scalabrini and Artemide Zati.